Yeah, hi everybody. I hope you've had a nice day today. Um, it's time for us to do a proverb. Um, I hope you're here to join me. Let's go. <clears throat> we did yesterday, whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but it's no good to you if you hate correction and are stupid. And you're stupid if you don't listen to correction. If you're not, not prepared to critically research the instruction and knowledge that you're getting, to make sure it's right, well, you could end up anywhere, couldn't you? Let's move on to Proverbs chapter 12, verse 2. It says, A good man obtains favour from the Lord, but a wicked, but a man of wicked intentions he will condemn. A good man obtains favour from the Lord. Now that's right to some extent, but we live in the New Testament covenant now. Our righteousness are as filthy rags. So how do we obtain our favour? Let's look at a scripture. We'll go to Ephesians 2. Now, you he made alive who were dead in trespasses. So it's got nothing to do with our good works. We were dead in our trespasses regardless of how good or how righteous we profess to be or supposed to be. We were dead in trespasses and sins in which you, were mon which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit, who now works in the sons of disobedience. Now disobedience to what? Disobedience to the message of Christ. People who reject and do not want the message of Christ. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh. Now these ones are the ones that think there's something that they need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. So among whom also we once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh. Now, that's got a twofold. That's, there's a social, normal outworking of sin, and then there's a religiously empowered outwork of sin. One is you don't care about God or anything, and you're just dysfunctional, and you're going around wrecking things. The other one is you've got every good intention, but you think there's things you need to do to make God happy or stop him from being sad, and, you, and you're just turning yourself evil. You're just inciting your lust fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and we were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, and let us not forget this, please, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, not when we were being good folks, when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. So this happened when Christ resurrected, even though we weren't there when he was resurrected. We were still raised with him. By grace you have been saved, and raised up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now you're not in the heavenly places physically, but because of your belief in him and his position in the heavenly places, you are there with him. You are secured. He has got your seat held. You will be saved that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. See, the exceeding riches of his grace far outweigh the horrible torments of his judgment. And in his kindness towards us in Jesus Christ, so the riches of his grace and his kindness toward us is in Jesus Christ. It's not by what we do. I'm going to say that again. It's not by what we do. Well, how can you say that? Dr. Morrison, oh, well, I don't need to say it. Let the scripture say it. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, not of works, not of anything we do or think we've done or can do or can't do, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. Now we'll go back to the proverb. A good man obtains favour from the Lord. The only favour we have received from the Lord now is by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So you're only good in terms of your religious position. Here a good man is simply a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not what you do or don't do. I repeat. It has nothing to do with what you do or don't do. The only good part about us is what Christ did in his finished work at the cross. But a wicked 
but a, but a man of wicked intentions, he will condemn. He will condemn. So what's a man of wicked intentions? Someone who doesn't want to accept the finished work of Christ. Now that can be a religious person, can't it? You can have good intentions and end up evil and end up wicked. Did you know that? You can have all the good intentions, religious intentions in the world and turn evil. Let's go again. We have to go back to Romans chapter 7. I'll keep pushing Romans chapter 7 because it's actually the, probably the most important chapter of scripture in the book. For when we are in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit to death. So our sinfulness, right, is about roused by the things we think we need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad because that's the best definition you can give to the law or any law that thinks there's something you need to do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. Any law for righteousness is defined as simply as this. It's something that you think you need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. Now, it might take years to comprehend it, but I'm giving you a shortcut. There is nothing you can do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. All you can do is believe in the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because by grace you have been saved through faith. Ephesians 2.8 And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. You've got to surrender to Christ and realize that his finished work has settled everything between you and God for time and eternity. All this running around or all this restraint all that's going to do is, in, is enforce your sinful nature. Whether you can see it on the surface or feel it underneath, it will eat at you. Because we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. Now let him do the work in us. Let him transform us. Because we're his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So in closing... A good man obtains favour from the Lord. That can only take place through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. But a, but a man of wicked intentions, he will condemn. If you are not fully rested upon the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, your intentions could very simply and very easily, as we see in many religious cults and many religious movements in our time, turn wicked. A good man obtains favour from the Lord, but a wicked man's intentions will condemn him. This is Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia. Bye for now. Yeah, Dr. Jason Morrison, Theologist again. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos and I uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it. If you watched it on YouTube, please share or like. Um, Maybe even comment if you watch it on Facebook. Like, comment, share. Um, but most of all, get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one of life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, thank you for watching and bye for now.